here you are starting an adventure. Um, I mean, this is, this is probably the biggest challenge you face. It has been uh, a very daunting challenge because at times I've felt like a kind of exchange student in Bogota or something where I'm learning a complete new language, you know, of the internet because I'm a print gal, you know. But it has also been such a stimulating education for me to get to grips with this new, exciting, living, breathing, multimedia uh, medium. It's really challenged and excited me and rejuvenated me in the most amazing way. My kids have been a huge support, like, you know, showing me stuff and sending me stuff. It's really been fun. So, but yes, I, I have been worried, of course, thinking, you know, what happens if this is like, doesn't work, but we've had the most amazing response. So I could not be more excited. Are your kids actually consultants on this? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're in school, but their, their emails are pretty uh, important. <laughs> um, the name. Yes. The Daily Beast. Correct. Explain where that comes from. Well, it has a twofold meaning. First of all, it does come from a very famous novel by Evelyn Waugh, who wrote a great funny novel called Scoop about journalism, which every journalist reads in England anyway. So I've always harbored that as a sort of little, little fancy of my own. But also, you know, I feel that the beast really is this kind of media beast, kind of, you know, gorging everything in the, in the jungle and sorting it all out and kind of conquering it. And it felt just kind of energetic and, and, and feral at times. <laughs> so we all loved it. But it's also, this is, I mean, you're pretty famous, um, even for, with all the magazines in the past, of tearing something up at the end and changing it if the news changes. But this is a world where constantly changing. I mean, yeah. isn't this pretty much a 24-7 venture? It is a very demanding thing to be on a 24-7 cycle. On the other hand, you know, you have to figure out the rhythms of people reading too because if you change wonderful stuff too many times and you know people are going to miss the great stuff so our, our site is really all about not giving you everything our site is about focusing people on the best stuff the pieces that we're choosing are 10 pieces across the board that we are in, uh, stimulated by interested in or entertained by and really it's about our sensibility mine as much as anything say i want a fantastic piece on politics that really moves the needle i don't need a thousand of them i want a fabulous opinion piece that really provokes me and, and, and challenges what i'm thinking about i need an amazing kind of news piece that is something that we couldn't even imagine that you know that we're really the best account of it i need a fabulous celebrity piece that told me something about a movie star or something that i didn't know you know, I need a provocative piece about the way we live now. It's really about hitting all our bases in one place. So how is this different from, we'll say, the Huffington Post or Drudge Report? It's different from those sites because of the sensibility. Um, because of Tina Brown. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, Drudge is terrific, but it's very much a sort of mainstream kind of um, sensibility. The Huffington Post is primarily driven by the political, uh, uh, liberal political lens. Our site is going to be a mix, a really uh, a, a provocative mix, if you like, from both sides of the of the political side. We don't have like a, a sort of left right, you know, uh, favoritism. We just we love it all. It's interesting, and we're going to put it up at the same time. And we're going to have politics and culture and and glamour and and lifestyle. And we're gonna we're going to do the whole mix uh, from a point of view of of both sides of the party political aisle. Do you worry at all that you're doing this a little? late, I, I'm afraid to say, do you worry a little bit that, I mean, there are already so many of these other websites. Sure. Um, according well, to know, David Carr, there's an estimated 180 million yes. websites out there already. Well, that's, it. but the point about it is we're not late because we only exist because there are 180 million websites out there. The point is that there's great stuff out there that we never see. And our job is to be there before anyone else uh, in terms of the width of our knowledge. I mean, most people focus on the same kind of outlets. It's news, it's politics. They come from the same kind of bevy of outlets. We're looking at stuff from abroad. We're looking at stuff from the UK. We're looking at stuff from, you know, we have a fantastic piece just at the moment about, you know, the, blo the what, what Fidel Castro is blogging about, for instance. You know, we're really uh, multinational, uh, multipolitical, and, and, you know, high and low. So it's, it's a different sensibility, just as my magazines were. So how does this differ from editing a print magazine? You know, it's very interesting. Print magazines, I'll always love print. I mean, obviously, it's, it's been my career for 25 years. Um, I do love the way you can splash photographs and be very creative with the layout. And the, uh, I miss that because the web actually is quite uh, confining. You know, you have to build these boxes in which you put material and they have to stay there or you have to write code to change those shapes. That takes time. On the other hand, uh, the multimedia element excites me because on the site we're doing a lot of video. 
And what I love is being able to be writing a piece about Michelle Obama and just instantly have a link to how she looked on the Jon Stewart show or whatever. It's magical in a way. And I've got really excited by that because, you know, to be able to bring the video mix into it is, is something that I, I really uh, find, you know, uh, creative in the extreme. Uh, I also love um, the speed, of course, with which you can respond. Uh, one of the things, the kind of journalism I love doing, and I've never really been able to do much on monthlies and weeklies, is what I call the in scoop of interpretation. You know, looking and thinking about things in a completely fresh way, quickly, so that somebody is, all the media are writing one thing about, you know, John McCain or, Mich or Obama, and I love then coming in with a piece that just takes it completely in the other direction, quickly, where you can just be saying, you know what, everybody is saying this, I'm so tired of hearing it. Let's just quickly get up a piece that goes the other way. And that's something that has to be done fast, because in this culture, we're all being swamped by news and opinion all the time, and it just dies if you just leave it in a weekly or a monthly, or it sits there looking like, you know, yesterday's Christmas dinner.